Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the series of 25 SAT Math Concept Summary. Today, we are going to talk about long division. So, long division is it's not your regular long division that we learned in grade, you know, in elementary school where we have to divide two numbers. But when we talk about long division, we are talking about division of two polynomials. So. First, we're going to look at how to divide a polynomial by another polynomial. Second, we need to know the remainder theorem. Third, we need to know the factor theorem. And the questions which are asked, which are framed from this topic on your SAT math, they are actually really simple questions. They're very straightforward questions. If you know how to divide a polynomial by another polynomial, and if you know the remainder theorem, you can easily get your points on those questions. So without further ado, let's get started. Now for the first point, uh, how to divide a polynomial by another polynomial, I will actually uh, take up a question and I will solve that question. And while solving that, I will also explain the method of division of two polynomials. So I'm going to start with second point, which is remainder theorem. So this remainder theorem is actually a shortcut. It's a shortcut that allows us to find out the remainder when we divide a polynomial by another polynomial. So if, if there is a polynomial f of x and you're dividing it by another polynomial g of x and you want to find out the remainder. So one way is that you actually divide this polynomial by this polynomial using long division and then you get the remainder. But the shortcut is using remainder theorem. So what does this remainder theorem tell us? So this remainder theorem, this remainder theorem tells us that if you have a polynomial f of x and you are dividing this polynomial by x minus c okay in this case the remainder your remainder is going to be f of c as simple as that we will see a question we will see a question how to find out the remainder using the remainder theorem so this is your remainder theorem And so that is your remainder theorem. And what is factor theorem? Factor theorem is nothing but it says that if a polynomial is completely divisible by another polynomial. So if I say that f of x is completely divisible by x minus c, then obviously the remainder is going to be 0, right? If a number is completely divisible by another number, then we get 0 as a remainder. So in that case, your in that case, this f of c will become equal to 0. f of c will become equal to 0 when, when, if and only if polynomial f of x is divisible by x minus c. And if f of x is divisible by x minus c, then we can say that x minus c is a factor of f of x. So I can say that f of x has x minus c as a factor if and only if f of c is equal to 0. So f of c is what? f of c is the remainder. This f of c is remainder. Then obviously if you're dividing something by its factor then you're going to get 0 as the remainder. Okay, so that's your remainder theorem and this is the factor theorem. I would say that factor theorem is nothing but just an implication of the remainder theorem. Okay, so we have done remainder theorem, we have done factor theorem and now we will see how to divide a polynomial by another polynomial using long division in the form of a question. So here we have this question, this is actually a previous SAT math problem. It says that which of the following expressions is equivalent to this. So here you see that in the numerator you have a polynomial f of x. 
right and it is it is getting divided by x minus 3 so this is of the form f of x over x minus c here the value of c is 3 okay now before we begin with solving this problem I also want to tell you a couple of statements that will follow because of the remainder theorem and factor theorem so okay so now this particular question can be solved um, in two ways okay first is we can actually divide this uh, f of x by x minus 3 by long division or I'm I'll also tell you a shortcut by which you can find out the answer without dividing the polynomials first let's do it using the long division method so you have to divide x square minus 2x minus 5 by x minus 3 so as we do in case of numbers we put the dividend inside and the divisor outside now how does this long division work is you, you look at the first term of your divisor first term of the divisor is x and you look at the first term of the dividend first term of the dividend is x squared so you have to think that x this x should be multiplied by what so that you get x square and it's obvious that if you multiply x by x so I'm gonna write x here that means that I have to multiply x by x so that I get x square okay so now the next step will be now you're gonna distribute this x to both the terms of the divisor so x times x is x square so you'll write this x square here and x times negative 3 is negative 3x so we'll write this negative 3x here and then what do we do in case of numbers we subtract right next next step is we are going to subtract so x square minus x square is going to be 0 and negative 2x minus negative 3x so this will become positive 3x so negative 2x plus 3x gives you just x and then you copy down the next term which is negative 5 now again think this x this x should be multiplied by what so that you get this x so x should be multiplied by 1 in order to get x so I'm gonna write a 1 here and then again we will distribute this 1 we will distribute this 1 to both the terms of the divisor so 1 times x is x and 1 times negative 3 is negative 3 and again we will subtract so x minus x is 0 and negative 5 minus negative 3 will make it positive so negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2 so this completes our long division and the final answer is gonna be so I can now write x square minus 2 x minus 5 over x minus 3 as uh, the question so this x plus 1 is now it's now our question this is question so this thing x plus 1 and plus negative 2 divided by x minus 3 so we get x plus 1 minus 2 over x minus 3 which is option D 
So this was a long way of solving this question. Now, uh, now I'm going to tell you the shortcut of doing this question. So you can actually also solve this question using the remainder theorem. Now, if you see in all the four options, the first two terms actually correspond to the question. Okay. And in the third term, the numerator is actually the remainder. Negative 20, negative 10, negative 8, negative 2. These are, these are actually the remainders. So, and you see that in all the four options, the remainders are different. So, all you need to do is, you need, you just need to find out the remainder. Okay. And we can find out the remainder by using the remainder theorem. So, what was the remainder theorem? It says that the remainder will be equal to f of c. So all we need to do is ju we just need to find out f of 3. So we just need to find out f of 3. So we have x square minus 2x minus 5. We just need to substitute x equals 3. So 3 square minus 2 times 3 minus 5. So this gives us 9 minus 6 minus 5. 9 minus 6 is 3, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So negative 2 is going to be the remainder and that is actually option D. So this is how you can solve this question using two ways. Now look, let's look at one more question. This is again a previous SAT math problem. Here it says that if x minus 2 is a factor of polynomial px equals a times x cube minus 2x plus b times x square minus 5 which of the following must be true so here we need to find out a relationship between a and b so that x minus 2 becomes a factor of this polynomial so now we know by factor theorem that if this x minus 2 is a factor of px then obviously the remainder will be 0 and remainder will be given by f of 2 so all you need to do is just substitute not f of 2 actually p of 2 p of 2 so p of 2 will be the remainder and if x minus 2 is a factor then the remainder will be equal to 0 right so let's substitute x equals 2 in px so we have a of x cube minus 2x plus b times x square minus 5 Let's put x equals to 2. So 2 cube minus 2 times 2 plus b times 2 square minus 5 will be equal to 0. So we get a times 2 cube is 8 minus 2 times 2 is 4 plus b. 2 square is going to be 4. 4 minus 5 equals to 0. 8 minus 4 will be 4. So 4 times a and 4 minus 5 will be negative 1. So minus b equals to 0. So again, we have option D. So that's it for polynomials. This is actually really, really, really simple concept. Uh, and you can actually, you can actually get your, you can actually get free points for the questions of polynomials. Trust me, you can get free points. So I think that's it for this video. I'm going to see you in the next video. Till then, keep practicing, keep watching my videos and yeah, all the best.